All right, what is going on everyone? Kuma here back with more Dead by Daylight for y'all today. What we got going on for today's video is the adept for the new killer, Pinhead, that just released in the Hellraiser chapter. And I gotta say, this killer is absolutely amazing. I love his theme, his power, his mori, his animations. Everything that they've done with this killer is spot on. And I really, really enjoy it, what they did and release with this killer. So first things first, what we're going to do is break down his power, his add-ons, and his perks. I'm not going to go over every add-on. I'm just going to probably just read off the ones that I'm using or um, give advice on which add-ons that, that I would probably bring. And it's all opinion-based as well. No add-ons are necessarily better than the other. In my opinion, it's all about your taste and your comfort and your personality when you play as a killer so come in my opinion comfort is better than strength in most situations if a certain add-on is better for you because you're more comfortable with it, it most likely you'll do better with an add-on that is stronger because you're more comfortable with the other add-on so it's all about preference and play style when it comes to add-ons so enough about that let's go ahead and go into the power instead first what we got going on for the power here it's called summons of pain an extra dimensional ghetto gateway that leads to pleasure and pain so great it will tear your soul apart press the power button to create a gateway and release the button to open it once open tap the ability button to summon forth a possessed chain under your control direct the chain into a survivor to bind them a survivor is bound to a chain is unable to sprint their movement speed will decrease further as they, they're hit with a second and third chain. Survivors can perform the break free action to escape. So let's go ahead and break down what that is real quick. So you use your power to teleport in a distance and gain insight. When you gain insight, you can see where everything is. You can aim your camera around to better look and get in the direction of where survivors are going. Who's up there? If you're on a bottom floor, you can use your power to teleport to a top floor. Like in Midwich, you can go from the bottom to the top and look around. And if you see someone, you can throw your chain out and use your uh, aiming to like a homing missile and then launch and strike into them. When you launch and strike into them, you bound them, and when you bind them, chains will haunt them and target them, and they will have to break free. So that's his power. It's pretty cool. I like it a lot. It's a little hard to use, in my opinion. I've tried it, like, a tiny bit, and it was super hard to use, so we're going to try it and see what we can do in our gameplay, because that's coming up soon. But it's pretty fun, nonetheless, and the more you get used to it, the easier it gets. So that's it about his uh, chains and then there is also there's a chain meter on the survivors and the chain meter fills up over time kind of like how Freddy's um, power works over time you know everyone goes to dream state I'll explain more about that in the second part which is in laminate configuration if left alone the laminate configuration indicates initiates a chain haunt a chain hunt, excuse me, by summoning chains to pursue survivors. A survivor carrying the laminate configuration will be affected with the oblivious status effect and chains will occasionally be summoned to attack them. The survivor must solve the laminate configuration to end the chain hunt and remove the puzzle from the box from their possession. While doing this, the Cenobite will see the location and able to teleport. So you'll get Killer Instinct when this happens. And you can teleport to them and he will say, I came and all that stuff, which is amazing. I love that line. When the Cenobite picks up the laminate configuration, a chain hunt is activated. Additionally, all survivors are instantly bound by chains, causing them to scream and reveal the locations. The laminate configuration will spawn a new location after the Cenobite or survivor has used it. So... Passively, I, I think that the chain hunt starts and to get rid of the chain hunt You got to run and solve the cube It'll be, as a survivor. It will be indicated in the map somewhere as the um, The lambda configuration is the cube. That's what the cube is so 
you just got to go and find it basically and solve it and then the chain hunt will stop i recommend that at the start of the trial to counter the chains someone goes and picks it up and has it in their possession and once everyone's meter is halfway then you use it and get rid of it because if you just use it every single time you see it um then you know you're not really letting it's you're just getting rid of it of it instantly and you kind of sort of wanted to build up a bit before you get rid of it so um you don't apply pressure by su um summoning the killer towards you or if you want to do like a, a play of some sort let's say someone's death hook and they're being chased by the killer you can pick up the cube and solve it and have the killer teleport to you and cause a distraction so there's different ways to play around the cube but nonetheless it's a really cool system and i like it a lot and then let's go ahead and go over the perk set that he has so we got scourge hook gift of pain and we got hex plaything and deadlock you can lock these level 30 35 and 40 in your blood web for all killers under this killer you'll see like a little yellow teachable icon under the perk if you want it to appear in everyone else's blood webs once you hit level 35 30 30 35 and 40 it'll let you unlock the unteachable that way so let's go ahead and go over this scourge hook gift of pain you are the bringer of sweet pain at the start of the trial up to four random hooks are changed into scourge hooks you see the arrows in white while the survivor is unhooked from a scourge hook they will suffer from the hemorrhage and mangle status effect until fully healed the first time the survivor is healed they suffer eight percent penalty in healing and repairing actions will until injured again then we got hex plaything a hex that toys with victim suffering the first time you hook a survivor they become cursed and hex plaything activates on a dull totem the cursed survivor suffers from the oblivious status effect which means they cannot hear the killer's terror radius so you're undetectable until hex plaything is cleansed hex plaything totem aura is revealed to a cursed survivor within 16 meters of it for the first 90 seconds only the cursed survivor can cleanse the totem so what's going on with this means that each time you hook someone and they get unhooked they get the oblivious status effect so multiple people can be cursed with hex plaything it's pretty neat it's pretty neat then we got deadlock i don't know if multiple people getting cursed at the same time after you unhook them and after they get unhooked is a glitch or not but i've been playing as survivor and i've been getting this happening to me and uh, more than two people on my team at the same time when we're playing together they will also get the oblivious stats effects so i don't know if that's a bug or not but i'm not sure but more than one people can have that effect and have to cleanse we've cleansed two totems at the same time before which was pretty pretty weird I don't know if that's a part of it or not, but we'll see. Then we got Deadlock. You induce mental suffering by crushing any hope of escape. After generator is repaired, the entity blocks the generator with the most progress for 25 seconds. You see this while our while our you see it's white aura, excuse me, during this time. So it's pretty cool. Just lets you know what generators are about to pop, and then if you have like Pop goes the weasel. You can just go to that generator and use Pop goes the weasel whenever you can. It's pretty crazy. And then let's go ahead and go over his add-ons. Um, so we got this engineer's fang, possess, change, injure healthy survivors, but do not bind them. I don't know about that. Iridescent laminate. When a chain hunt is active, survivors beyond 16 meters of the laminate configuration cannot see its aura. That's pretty cool. But uh. In all, in all honesty, with these add-ons, I recommend just um, when a survivor uses the environment to break a chain, an additional chain targets them, and then the original pain is pretty good. Injured survivors who break free from a possessed chain suffer deep wounds, so they have to mend. That one's really good. There's times where I am, I haunt, uh, I use, use my ability and. Um, use my possessed chain and like I, it goes inside them and then they're running around trying to mend and continuous chains are crushing them and they go down because of that it's pretty neat it's pretty good i like that one and there's also 
increase the time it takes for survivors to solve the laminate configuration that is prolonging everything that's what you want as a killer you want to prolong the game so this right here larry's remains extremely good i recommend this and then um yeah basically just this one and this one or these this one's good i'm not really sure about the others but i always use uh, larry's remains because you want them to suffer and everyone because once they solve the cube everyone's um chains are gone everything gets cleansed so you want to prolong that so this one's really good anyways let's jump into some gameplay and uh, we're gonna bring a mori and show off his mori as well so i'll see you all in the gameplay in the next section thanks for listening in to the intro all right gas haven not too bad let's get started Okay. That chain is super hard to control. First time playing this killer, by the way, so bear with me here while I get used to it. Perfect. Alright, everyone's down by the chain now, which is good. Let's throw her on a hook. A little sloppy at the start, but that's okay. We're here to learn and play at the same time. Oh. No one's going for the chain. Or the, the cube, so we're fine there. I didn't bind him. It's hard to control the chain. There's one. Let's grab Adam now. Oh. Wow, it's because I'm closing it. 
I need to let go of the power to keep it. Let's go ahead and grab her. She's death hook next, so we can use our Murray on her whenever. So let's go ahead and throw you on the hook. be a status effect from our power or our perk the plaything which is really good I, pinhead's super good i really like him a lot so you want to hook mr francis and then pop this and go to the basement for the moria gonna grab her that's a shame all right looks like we don't get to marry her poor girl got Leon chained right now Adam, where's Adam at? Normally you don't break that door, but I wanted to. I thought I would go through the crack of that. That's okay. How'd that miss him? I'm a little confused about that, but that's okay. Ah! 
That's why you break doors, just for that reason. Now I can worry him right here. Oh, 9360. Oh, he's not death hook yet. I thought he was. Never mind. Sorry, Leon. <laughs> That's such a cool Mori. I like it. All right, so what we go we are going to do is hit this person, because then they are both that type. Dang. It's super hard to control that. I want to get this person one more time. How's that not hit? She has a pallet right there. That was so annoying. Like, I mind game her and everything. And the game was like, nope. <laughs> now Hatch is fun, so that's not good for us. Where's Adam at? He's at him. Alright, I'm just gonna be patient. Wait for it. Jeez, okay. You got them Nikes on, Adam. I'm just getting impatient. Alright, let's do this. Hopefully, she's not on hatch. There you are. Alright. 
such a cool animation and everything. <laughs> that was really fun. Well guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. Sorry about my sloppy play at the beginning. I'm still learning this killer. That was my first game as them, so um there it is. You know, we got some silver ranks, we got some gold ranks. I'm I'm myself in just like uh bronze. But we played people we played against people in gold and silver, so people are higher above my grade level, a lot higher, so we did pretty good. So that's about it. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you guys want to see next. If you guys want me to make more killer videos, let me know if you guys want more survivor videos, just let me know. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one.